Hello and welcome to my nuclear high fleet campaign featuring no war crimes at all, not even by accident. I'm, I will be playing on hard mode, I will be playing on the 1.16 patch. Um, the main reason why I'm doing this is because I, I want to explore a bit of the patch, I want to see uh, what are the differences in the campaign. Um, I did not play uh, a campaign playthrough in this patch uh, yet. I did a nuclear campaign before in 1.15 and it went quite well. I took pretty much every town in Gerard and yeah, I kind of, I don't know if I will completely complete the whole game like this again, but let's see. Uh, the reason why I'm doing it is actually because I would argue that a nuclear campaign is easier than a normal campaign. In a normal campaign, you have to wear down strike groups with aircraft and missiles, and it takes many air airstrikes, it takes sometimes many missiles, and you in the end still have to fight them uh, in arcade combat. But in a nuclear campaign, you will just pretty much, well, nuke the strike groups, and they're not a big deal. Uh, which also, I mean, that sounds pretty boring, but yeah, the rest of the fighting will still be, will still be on hard mode, will still be quite challenging also because I think that the new patch 1.16 has made some balance changes. I think arcade combat is uh, arguably a bit harder, at least for me. It just feels this way, but I have only played uh, in the ship works, I've only played ship testing. And yeah, before we get into it, I'll show you the ships I will be taking with me and then we'll start. Uh, I'm not certain this will even, that I will win this time that I will not get totally obliterated. Uh, anything can happen in High Fleet. Maybe I'll do some big mistakes and it will just uh, end there. But if that happens, that's okay. Then I will probably be a bit, bit um, more educated on the strength, strengths and weaknesses of my ships. Uh, also, sorry in advance for my thick accent. I'm very aware of it, but yeah, maybe some of you can even enjoy it. Yeah, so let's get into shipworks. So this is the Blackbird, which was also in my previous nuclear campaign, my greatest asset. It's just uh, basically simple missile carrier slash tanker. It will probably escort my strongest fighting ships, my strongest strike groups, and it's basically just made for defense. It has only yeah, it has the A100s, so I can shoot down incoming nukes. It's pretty much the most reliable way. Maybe in this patch it isn't anymore. I don't know. Uh, we will see how this will perform, how this will go. Mm, sometimes A100s have have a thing where they just uh, where they miss incoming missiles, and then then I'm really I'm really fucked. Um, yeah, you can see I have no sprints in any of my ships, uh, even the most vulnerable ones, even the missile carriers and stuff. I have no sprints with me. The reason is if I get nuked if I have to use a sprint. Um, I think I've already lost, it's already over. Even if I shoot down an incoming nuke with sprints, uh, I think the damage will be pretty heavy and I don't even want to get to the point where I have to use sprints, so so I'm not taking them with me. Even though in my last campaign I realized that it would have been a good choice to bring sprints, but um, I will still try, <laughs> try without, because it worked without, so but uh, maybe in the next campaign, maybe in the next campaign I will also maybe rely on aircraft uh, if I ever do a nuclear campaign again. But for now, I will um, keep it like this. Um, yeah. Here we simply have the nuclear version of the Blackbird. Um, it just, instead of, it, it still has two A100s, normal ones, to defend itself. It has two KH-15s and some A100Ns. Uh, cage 15 ends of course I can I was using this like pretty reliably uh, as an offensive um, nuclear carrier like I was pushing with it and trying to shoot down um, strike groups with it and I hope it will just yeah it will do its job again and I will probably use this as a tanker too so this is my flagship it's just a big blackbird as you can see it's it's pretty much just the Blackbird, a bit uh, rebuilt, and it's my main nuclear carrier. Has the tracking radar, has a little eland. Uh, it's what I'm was going for here is uh, for a cheap price. I want to have a cheap um, 
cheap flagship so I can buy more interceptors, more other ships, and I still cannot buy so many other ships. It's still kind of expensive. This is my last line of defense. Um, you really don't even need so many nukes for a nuclear campaign. The reason for that is that a strike group, most of the time a strike group will go down with two nukes, one nuke, or at, uh, at max three nukes. Uh, so you really, it doesn't matter how big the strike group is also, because yeah, a nuke does lots of damage. And if it's a good hit, you will kill it with one nuke. And yeah, and then it will be, will be it and you don't even need so many. And you will get some from, from the campaign. The campaign will provide you with lots of nukes at every save point. So yeah, um, the only thing I forgot on the ship. Oh no, I have I have um, escape pods. I didn't put most of my ships don't have no not all, all of my ships. All of my ships don't have crew. I didn't build crew compartments on all of them. The reason for that is because I think it's still not implemented. Um, ships perform well. They perform uh, totally fine without crew quarters. So, um, like, like in ship testing, if you fly them, the guns turn fast uh, enough, you fly fast enough. It's, it's really, I think they just still didn't really implement the crew thing. And so I'm trying to save weight and, and of course, like space and of course money. So I'm not building crew on it because it's a mechanic that is not fully implemented yet. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a bit cheesy, but of course, if the game allows it, I will cheese, and it's a hard mode nuclear campaign, so yeah, I don't really feel bad about it. Maybe maybe another time. <laughs> so here we have the chip chaff. Uh, it's like a, mostly used as a radar ship. I feel like I have a little tracking radar on it uh, to search for hidden cities mostly, and a little eland, and I think this is uh, quite enough um, for this kind of a ship. You see, it doesn't have any landing gear. This is a big mistake. Don't ever do this. Uh, if you do it, uh, you can actually build a ship without landing gear. If your ship is below 2,000 tons, then it will... Your landing gear, like your, your self-made landing gear, uh, won't be hurt. So it's actually fine to land this thing, but uh, if your ship is a bit heavier, it will uh, fall apart or uh, will get damaged every time you try to land. I build it this way because it saves some... Um, yeah, it saves some uh, weight. Uh, it's a little bit um, less heavy than if I would have uh, put landing gear on it. And since I want this to be like really fast, I want it to have a good range, I just uh, min-maxed uh, it like this. But all my other ships have landing gear, of course. Because you, you really don't want to have this get shot down and then uh, you're not able to land and repair fast. But this thing will not see combat uh, much anyway, I hope. Yeah, and uh, it's also really, um, you can really use it as a tanker. It says it has a really good range actually, and you can use it as a tanker for smaller ships. And yeah, that's the chip chaff. So this is the black grouse. And yeah, it's also just a tanker equipped with uh, two LA 29s. It, I will only use these to scout ahead. This was a mistake I did in my previous campaign, that I didn't have any aircraft carriers. I know what you're thinking right now, you're doing a nuclear campaign without aircraft carriers, it's pretty um, dumb, but yeah, it's true, it is pretty dumb to take no aircraft with you. But I still mostly want to use them for scouting, and yeah, I should probably take T7s, but um, I still, after all my playtime, I still have not tested if a T7 is able to with an uh, equipped with an uh, anti-air missile, if, if it's able to shoot down a nuke without um, getting destroyed itself, you know. So I will probably try if it works in this campaign to test it out. If I can use T7 to um, shoot down a nuke without it being destroyed, but uh, yeah, I, I will just uh, use this um, this tanker without T7s simply uh, so I save some money and if I find some T7s in the campaign I will probably exchange it and yeah. So yeah, also only little tracking radar, an eland, not the best ship, yeah, it will hopefully do its job. Could also use more aircraft but maybe we'll just modify it in the campaign. So I think everyone who has played High Fleet a bit 
has built some variation of this ship. This is just simply like a jammer drone. It has a little jammer, has too little power for it, um, for its own sake. But uh, I mean, I don't need power because it doesn't have guns. It's it still flies uh, the same speed on the campaign map, and I will only be using it for the campaign map, or maybe to bait out some garrison, or to pick up um, to pick up like a crash site. Well, it does uh, as many uses. I might even be able to utilize the drama and it's it's simply like to, to go back to towns where you have been and to pick up some intel and stuff like a very basic thing everyone should have some some variation of this in his fleet to make uh, his life easier I think this is the nut hatch as you can see it's one of the few ships I actually put NK engines uh, on as lots of lots of fire suppression systems um, so I can actually use them once the um, engines overheat because they refill automatically after a fight and yeah it's also a redesign I, of, my, of an old uh, Nathatch design I had um, made for, for this patch uh, I wanted to have some okay combat time with it combat time could be higher but uh, two minutes like Two minutes and uh, a half it should be something it should be fine for most uh, fights as you can see it only has one 180 cannon so it's gonna be a snipe fest and um, yeah it's gonna be quite hard to actually um, kill something with this it's gonna be probably very very nerve-wracking to fly this and to try to take garrisons with it and it pretty much relies on having a laser guided ammo and I don't know if I actually can buy enough to make this survive the whole campaign. Not sure, but I will still try because it's really fun to snipe with a 180 cannon and they made it, definitely they made it better in this patch. Uh, yeah, um, maybe it needs some redesigning. I will just, uh, in its current state, take it with me and yeah, and let's see. So this is the gold pinch. It's, uh, it's basically a gladiator without armor. It has four AK-100s this is why it's a gladiator, but no, it's uh, it's quite fast. It's an old design that I just redesigned a bit for this campaign. Has no NKs, still fast, only uh, D30s. I actually expect to lose this ship because it has no armor. It's quite um, quite vulnerable. Has has one flare, like most of my fighting ships. And yeah, maybe I won't lose it. Uh, the, maybe the firepower will um, actually save it but I'm not certain it will uh, come to the end of the campaign with me because I'm also not so confident in my flying abilities uh, of the ship. <laughs> this is the J. Um, as you might have been able to tell, I'm using bird names for my ships because um, I'm incredibly uncreative. So, and I'm also just translating these bird names from my native language, uh, yeah. So this is the J, fairly standard uh, combat ship, 1D80, 2 AK-100s, good armor I would say, uh, has good combat time, um, only D30s of course, I can't put NKs on it or the combat time will be um, very very stressful. Yeah, um, the design, it's, uh, it's just long, basically only for my guns to have more um, more coverage, so these two AKs don't block each other. Of course, they're getting blocked by the D80. Um, you really don't have to build it this way. It's okay if guns block each other. The stock, um, the stock gladiator still is uh, quite dangerous. It's quite scary. Even though most of the AKs on the stock gladiator are blocking each other, it will still, um, it will still fuck you up. I built, I still built it this way because I thought, oh. This was an early build, I thought, oh, it's so bad if blo uh, guns block each other, but it, it really doesn't matter that much. And yeah, so, but I will still take it with me. I will still uh, see, want to see how it performs. And yeah, this is the Robin. As you can see, a very um, obvious lightning replacement. The lightning in 1.16 is a bit, a bit slow. It's uh, below 400, uh, uh, below 500 kilometers per hour. So this is already an existing design that I just changed a little bit and I think it's quite it's quite good for 1.16. Um, 
static thrusters facing upwards and sidewards. Um, this is because I think the normal D30S engines, the static engines, are they don't consume much fuel, they're cheap. Um, of course, and if you put them in every direction, you will uh, still be able to um, steer your ship quite well. Yeah, but it's basically lightning. Uh, a bit faster, a bit, bit, bit better fuel consumption, has uh, not so much combat time, but I think the uh, stock lightning is also just a bit uh, inferior to this. Here we have the Snipe. It will be my most expensive combat ship. It only has two, uh, two A 220s. Um, I never used um, rocket launchers before in a campaign, so I really want to try them. I already know that they're really good in this patch. They completely shred uh, bigger ships with ease. And so yeah, I just want to try it out. Uh, even though I will be nuking most of the strike groups, maybe I have to finish some off and then I might use the ship. Or if I have some hard garrisons to take, this will help a lot. Um, yeah, it has like a completely has way too many engines, I know. Some NKs in the middle, so they get shot off less, and only D30s on the outside. Yeah, um, spaced armor also, which is not necessary, and it's also not uh, necessarily good. I think they changed it in this patch so that incoming projectiles will just go through um, empty hull space, and probably they'll go through empty space. If they go through empty hull, they probably also go through completely empty space too. So I could have made it a bit cheaper, a bit lighter, uh, if I would have just put the armor on the surface. But yeah, I, well, I'm looking forward to actually firing some A220s. It's it's really fun, it's really fun to steer with them, like to get a good angle with them to um, actually hit something with it. Probably easier to hit a harder, a bit larger ships with it than uh, like if I have to fight sloggers and lightnings and courageouses, but uh, that's what the armor is for, so I can uh, have many tries with it. So, let's just get right into it. Um, I will leave Dithering on if you watch this campaign. Watch it in full screen, so Dithering, like this effect with this grainy look, doesn't look like trash on your uh, screen. I should actually turn it off, I know, I know. But I really like the look of it, and um, yeah, I will keep it on because um, I would just recommend you to watch it on full screen. If you don't, I hope it doesn't look too um, shitty. <laughs> and yeah, uh, skip hard mode. Oh, hi. Get the drone. Get the chiff chaff. Get another version of the chiff chaff, which just has a radar on it. Get the blackbird. Mm hmm. Get the nuclear blackbird here and this ship, the goldfinch. And let's not forget my snipe. So, is this right? Do I have everything? Do I have a tanker for everything? I think so, yes. If you want to watch a campaign 
where someone reads out all the dialogue, I would recommend you to watch a different one. I think I will skip most of the I will skip most of the dialogue and uh, this will just uh, really be focused on fighting. Um, I'm also not sure yet how much I will actually cut out, if I will cut out anything, because most of the decision making will take a long time and most of it is not in very interesting to watch, so maybe I will cut it a bit, but yeah. I also thought this might be done like a little bit for educational purposes. People who are not um, so familiar with Pipe Fleet, maybe I actually explain all of my decision making and uh, so that they might uh, struggle less when they play it and they can watch my campaign. But that would, um, that would mean that I'm really good at this game. I just played this for a long time. I would say I'm really good. And I would s uh, I I'm not I'm not sure if I will win this. If I if this will go very far. I'm not confident in my abilities. I will just try my best. And if this is a failed attempt, if I will get destroyed utterly, um I might upload it. I might still upload it and then try again. And then try again until I win. Because I think High Fleet for me is a game about getting shot down, it's about struggling, it's about um, being uh, on the other end of the barrel. For some people it's a power fantasy, they build huge huge cruisers and destroy everything with ease and it's, that's fun, that's nice. That's um, a way to play the game, it's up to you. But I really enjoy the David vs. Goliath uh, thing flying a lightning against a strike group and still winning. So, first off, starting the nuclear war without war crimes, we take our drone and we take our missile carrier. To fly to the nearest city and actually the best thing in the beginning would be to take uh, Intel Town, which is quite far away. This is uh, quite, uh, quite a difficult start, I would say. But since we don't have money anyway, and it's always good to have a town where you can repair faster, we will just go to the to Magor and take this town to be able to repair faster. Um, usually in the beginning there's not so many enemy missile carriers, not so uh, much uh, aircraft carriers. So you can advance uh, quite safely. The first strike groups always... All of this is a huge spoiler. Uh, I'm very familiar with the game. I will I will talk like um, you are already also familiar with High Fleet. If you don't want that, if you are not familiar with the game, if you want to play it yourself, if you don't want any spoilers, um, don't don't watch it. <laughs> I, will be, I will be rough with, spo with spoilers. I will spoil a lot and yeah. Um, Um, I also will play slowly, of course, it's a nuclear campaign, I don't want to make mistakes. Um, this is also where I think maybe I cut out most of the decision making. I like to play the game in mostly real time, <laughs> I don't skip time much. <laughs> I really enjoy High Fleet, I really like High Fleet, this is why I'm playing this first. And yeah, uh, I think also because there's not so many missile carriers or strike groups around, I think I might just send out my first other strike group. So, what will my strike groups consist of? Um, yeah, let's see. Let's first see how my, much my 180 millimeter, um, millimeter ship will fare in a combat situation. How good my aim is still, and I will use you guys as, a, as my first, first strike group. But I really need to get to the, to the intel point. I know you can rely on Eland the whole campaign, but uh, I didn't bring a good Eland. I really didn't bring good um, a good Eland system. Most of them have one thousand kilometers of kilometers range, and yeah, it's quite quite risky to just rely on Eland in a nuclear campaign. And I definitely need to see where the uh, where the missile carriers are. I definitely need to take it. So first off, we have to raise the alarm. Mm -hmm. And after we raise the alarm, we can use the drone to lure out the garrison and then nuke it without um, committing a war crime. Uh, 
Uh, we can also you can basically land here. It doesn't matter, and you go first. I will want to land him only because then he will uh, use less fuel. The garrison will not follow you if you don't actually engage uh, with it. So, I really hope my J drone, yeah, I hope my Gemma drone won't get shot down. I uh, will, in any case, I can retry. Uh, so. Oh no, I'm a soldier! Now sometimes you have to be really, really careful with retreating. Sometimes if you retreat, your ship like ends up on the other side of the of the garrison, and if you'd like tell him to go back to the ship where it's coming from, sometimes it just uh, crashes right into the garrison again, and uh, you have to you lose morale. You have to retreat again. It's a bit fucky, so yeah, watch out for that. Why are my my engines damaged because I overheated them so much? It's normal. Interesting. Is this a thing now? <laughs> you make new discoveries instantly. Now you can pretty much go airborne soon. Uh, let's wait a bit. Let's see over here. Okay, you will take ages forever you will take. I mean, I can also already put another Already sent another strike group. I really need to take so many towns, uh, mostly because I want money. If you destroy, uh, destroy a garrison, there's a good chance you'll get some money out of it. And yeah, um, it's gonna be really hard to, to catch traders. Traders are well defended in the hard mode, and I simply, the best way to make much money is just to take as many towns as you can. And now you take off again. Oh wait, they didn't. Are you serious? Okay, because I'm on the ground they don't see me anymore. Okay. Ah, now you see me. And they're also getting airborne. Take off. Take off, Blackbird. I love this song. I really wish the the song that comes um, when you're being detected it would like stay for the whole duration of being detected. I really like it. Sometimes it just disappears later on. Maybe you would get annoyed, but okay. Um, yeah, okay. H fifteen and it is. So if I, I'm I'm really I'm not sure if I'm just pressing on the incoming enemy and now shoot. Will my missile actually understand and uh, start searching for the enemy when it's supposed to or will it start searching for the enemy behind the enemy now because this is what it looks like now. If it does that then it will destroy the town and then my whole war crime campaign is already fucked. Let's fly a bit uh, further away maybe. I kinda wanna just uh, do it like this. Start searching from here. Uh, Piotr, yes, this was going to happen sooner or later anyway, so chill. Okay, looked like it worked. Looks like it worked. Well, here we have our first nuke. Oh, oh, oh. Wow, the sound design they also completely changed. And may may the Lord have mercy on our souls. Truly. Is there not even anything left I can pick up? Oh that's sad. Jesus. <laughs> Usually there's at least something left. Well well. Now of course the alarm is raised, spread groups will come here, and the other towns I will take. Of course I will raise the alarm again, because they're now on edge. Um, 
quite a year. I think my last campaign I actually started the nuclear war only with the first contact with a strike group. So I think this is already off to a harder start, but um, there's no way to make it any different. The chase! A crowd of people rushes from the city to your ship as soon as you arrive. The elderly joy in the lead. Amid the screams and wails, it tells you about the military convoy that left the city just the other day. Oh, it's a quest where I have to chase down um, an enemy ship, which is... No, actually, actually no. Um, cancel landing. Some fuel. Um, I will probably not be able to to chase them. Uh, simply because I will run into the arms of um, uh, run into the arms of a strike group, and I actually I didn't read it, so I don't know where they actually went. So <laughs> I just fucked up anyway. Uh, usually. I did these quests, and they happen a lot, and I mean, like once a playthrough they happen, maybe. And maybe we'll just, by accident, find this uh, find this convoy again and just destroy it. They are, they're, I think they're acting like normal convoys, uh, even though they have like slaves, and they're just going between towns, and yeah, so it's not no big deal. Uh, what is a big deal is that I still don't have uh, intel. It's also a big deal is where could the hidden cities be? Probably maybe in this area. Probably maybe in this area. Yeah. Not sure. It's always like in, in big gaps. Let's continue. What I've noticed in a campaign like this what makes a campaign like this arguably easier than a normal one? Or... The thing is, if you raise the alarm all the time, I raise the alarm here, I raise the alarm there, the AI of the strike group it will just be... Um, it's very basic. It will just like suddenly decide to fly here, then it will decide to fly here. It's not... Um... Oh, just a second. It's not, it's not hard to confuse the AI and make it go somewhere where you want it to go. Actually, I wanted to detach my 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 fighting ship from my uh, tanker, so my tanker doesn't lose morale. But since there was a message now, okay, uh, wait. Act Proxima arrive at Proxima in three hours. Route Magor Magor. What Magor Magor? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ram. Okay. Uh, oh no, that's bad news. There's someone coming to Magor right now. Probably a trader. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's actually good. We simply have to send someone there that will take less than three hours. That's a good ship to fight a trader. I guess I will use this one. Maybe one of these is actually cut out for going there by himself, so I can just use the ship that's already there as a tanker. Yeah, let's use this one. Wait, wait, how long do you need, actually? Didn't check that. Okay. Oh, this is an easy garrison. Sometimes they can be really mean. Can be really a hard garrison. This is the flower shot down? I don't really see it. As I said, it's gonna be hard to use this ship, especially against tiny targets. 
And you don't actually you don't actually want to get too close to them. Oh wow. Cause the falling debris of the you uh, take if they take a hit, you really have to care. Oh my god. You really have to take care that you don't uh, too close to the explosion and uh, ram the falling debris. Thanks for being such an easy. Thanks for being s such an easy town, Garrus. Yes, of course, of course, the survivors. I have the bad feeling that the survivors won't actually make it because I cannot protect my crew, and this is a lose lose situation. But if I use crew protection, uh, if I search for survivors now, like 50 people will die, and I will save like two people. It's, um, yeah, it's a joke. Um, this is why I will take the gun. And also, I will stop this episode for now. And. See you in the next one.